joining again. Yeah, thank you so much. I can imagine that that was very, um, very inappropriate. So sorry about that. Uh, thank you so much for coming back. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to get started. Thank you for coming to our panel with Anti-Fragile Zine. Anti-Fragile Zine was started by Macy and Mumi. Macy is a 19-year-old artist from Berkeley, California, now living in San Diego. She's currently a first-year student at UC San Diego, start majoring in design. She can be found living out some crazy spontaneous adventures mm -hmm. if her life was an upcoming indie movie roller skating around campus, thrifting with friends, or on a long Zoom call um, working on Anti-Fragile Zine. And Miyumi is the other founder of Anti-Fragile. She's a 16-year-old Japanese-American artist from Berkeley, California, a junior at Berkeley High School, and training in ballet and contemporary dance at Berkeley Ballet Theater. She loves to spend time, uh, her free time painting, writing poetry, listening to music, and dancing in her room to Ezra Furman. Uh, she's focused on expanding the definition of what good art can be and hoping to connect with as many artists as possible through working on Anti-Fragile with her best friend, Macy. Love hearts. <laughs> what up? Um, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, just to get started, if you guys want to ask questions in the chat, that would be amazing. Um, and so just tell us about your zine. Yeah, okay. Um, so... We launched in on June 16th, but um, really the way we started is, Mimi, you can go into detail on this, but um, Mimi had posted on her story about like wanting to start an artist collective of some sort. Um, Mimi, do you wanna just like talk a bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So um, I remember I think like mid-May probably, nah. um, yeah. I, I remember like this was really just like out of the blue. I remember like I was in a car with I was in the car with my dad and I was like my dream is to like work with a ton of artists like make an artist collective I was kind of like describing all these things that I wanted to do and he was like you know you can just do that right now and I hadn't really even thought of that I was like I don't have any credentials like I'm not even that good at art like I was just being really hard on myself and then I started realizing like you know like that doesn't even really matter because if I can get with people like that's the main thing that I want to achieve so I just like posted to my story. I think like being in the Bay Area also was really important because Bay Area is just like filled with all of these like amazing artists all over the place. So I was like really, I just kind of knew that if I tried and like put myself out there, I could definitely get in contact um, with like, you know, a bunch of talented people like Macy. Um, so I posted to my personal like main Instagram story. I was like, hey, like, you know, if there are any artists in the Bay looking to like, you know, join any kind of artist collective, work with me and other Bay Area artists um, with the, you know, main objective of, or like, I guess, main focus on uplifting like female artists of color, like artists of color in general, you know, hit me up, we can make something work. and in general, like people were really excited about it just in, from my own community, but Macy like DMV and there's like a whole story behind this, but like she, responded. <laughs> yeah. she was like, um, no, we can make this big or whatever, you can go into it. <laughs> yeah, cause I was editor in chief of yearbook in my high school. So I had like kind of experience with like working on a publication and managing a team. Um, and I'd always, always wanted to start something like this. So when I saw that on me and we story we weren't like we're best friends now but we like did not really know each other when this like happened we just like kind of knew each other from Instagram and like had went on a date once <laughs> but <laughs> that was like it and so I was like me and me like I think we can like take this big like would you be like down to co-found this with me like I had all these ideas but it really just started out as like a rough idea like we want to start something and a bunch of like a list of names of people being like yeah this sounds really great like how can we all help so then soon I got on a call with Miu Mi and we just like, like wrote out all these ideas or like big goals, like what we wanted, like we wanted to give platform to like these like, you know, like women of color and marginalized voices. And um, I think one of the things that really like drove us forward into like, you know, our specific like, anti-fragile and like kind of what differentiates us is that we noticed like, I mean, a lot of other the zines and how like focused they were around, not even just like that, that a lot of them are more like, Eurocentric or like lots of white creators but also just that there was like this romanticized version of youthhood and adolescence and the like you know overdone coming of age story of like with Lady Bird and Call Me By Your Name and um 
like kind of that aesthetic and it was very romanticized and we felt like it didn't accurately represent like you know the whole population and there's a lot of like struggles and like stories that go untold um and so we kind of wanted to like highlight the you know the ugly and the beauty and just like everything else and so yeah that's kind of the idea that antifragile formed on that's super cool i love how it was kind of like oh, I don't know if I can do this. Like Mimi, like you were saying, like, oh, I don't, I want to do this, but I don't know if I can. And then you were just like, oh, but like, why not just do it anyway? Like, yeah. and then you just, you guys just kind of did it. That's like super awesome. And I love that you have like this niche take on, on the zine. Obviously like the zine community is like saturated to a certain degree. So the fact that you guys like have like a super distinct voice and like point of view, it's like super, super cool. Um, yeah. I'm also curious where the name itself came from and like kind of what it represents for you guys. Yeah, yeah. So when we were brainstorming for names, we just had the list of like rough words. And I had just remembered the word antifragile from this one conversation I had with this guy back in New York, like four years ago. And he was like, yeah, like the idea of like, as humans, we're an antifragile, which means we're not like resilient or robust in the sense that we're so strong that we don't break, but more that we like break so many times over and over and reform and grow and heal from our mistakes and our, um, and our failures and sort of the idea of like the goal is not to be perfect but you know to like you know like, yeah basically learn from hardships um and that like word antifragile just like came up and really like stuck I and mean, we felt like you know also that's the idea that it like came from I think it's also a book um we should definitely look into that more but um yeah it also um what am I saying um we also like kind of like the idea of like anti-fragile and like fragility and how that like relates to like women females like being like fragile and kind of like it sounded very like you know like out there and like combating that and like sort of like breaking stereotypes and it just like yeah like the more that we kind of even progressed with the project we were kept finding more ways where that kind of idea came up and it just felt very representative of like who we wanted to be how we wanted people to see us and so yeah it, it felt right that's awesome. I love that. That's like originally what like drew me towards you guys. Cause like you represent this like badass, like collective of women, like we're not fragile, like, you know, um, so I love that. So what is your favorite part about running a zine? Mimi, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, I honestly feel like the, I mean, going back to like what I had first desired so much, like out of creating an artist collective, even just like the opportunity to like meet and work with so many like badass people like you know I feel like I kind of have more of this sense of like being a part of something bigger than like just myself like being able to reach out and like actually like I feel like the biggest like the most impactful part for me is like when somebody like dms us and just says like you know like this is my favorite page of this issue and like, or something like that, like, or just getting like a, a DM that's like, oh, I just read this thing and it really impacted me. Like being able to like, I guess, connect with people on that level is um, really, really fulfilling artistically and just in general. And I feel like um, it gives me a bigger sense of like, I don't know, like this is important and we need more of this, um, especially because like, uh, artists of color are so heavily, I guess, silenced. And I feel like that is something that's really special about this. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I would say like the same and just as an artist and how meaningful it is when somebody else like feels seen and represented in your art or like connects with you and empathize with you. Like that's the power of art. Like we can really like connect with each other and to be creating something that's bringing like all of these artists together and like kind of funneling in like this huge platform of artists from all over all into one like little place and having that just like connect infinitely like way more people I feel like that's super super powerful and just being able to like work on something that not only like make, brings me so much happiness but also just like spreads so much art to everyone and that just like that purpose and the reason why we started Antifragile and like making you know people that often don't feel seen in art feel seen is is so powerful and that's I feel like you know like the working on Antifragile like just like gives me so 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 much purpose for that and I'm just like super passionate about it so yeah so badass I, I love that so much I love how 
yeah, like just the the act of spreading art and like having a bunch of people be able to experience, you know, like awesome things, but especially being responsible about it and like doing it in a way that's uh, that's that's very nice for everyone, you know, not not exclusive in, in any certain way. Um, what are what are some ways that you guys kind of like cultivate that kind of strong uh, community and that friendly community and you know supportive community? What are some things that you guys do like? when you perhaps when you're making each issue or like just overall to support the people who are, you know, in the community? Mm -hmm. I feel like for us, what we really try to do is we really like before we even launched really focused in on what our mission is and why we're starting this so that we could best communicate that when we like, you know, publish and have our image out and like, you know, like really just like think about our values and mission as a team. And because we did that, I think that the people that like are drawn to us, like know what we're about, like they know from the like get go, like why we're here, like our, our mission, and everything. And that sort of like creates this like very like safe community where like that is very established from, from the beginning. Mimi, do you want to like elaborate more? Yeah, I mean, I feel like because we're so I guess transparent about what we're about the people and the audience that we attract is also we kind of have this automatic understanding of like you know what this is trying to do like what what are we trying to do collectively as like you know a, a, I guess in a, a media platform and and so in that sense I feel like because we are quite you know clear about what what our values are in general be, like with the submissions that we get the the art that we kind of you know give a platform to is very already kind of catered to what we're about and I feel like because of that I don't know it, it, it in general our audience is able to feel seen because they know that our purpose is to make them feel seen if that makes sense yeah yeah definitely and why do you think um, like today in these times more than ever, it's important to uplift um, artists of color's voices. Um, I feel like, I mean, the, the obvious answer would just be because, you know, you see the least of those voices in media in general, like media is completely overpowered by white male voices. Um, and even in media that's supposed to be catered to like, you know, leftist or liberal spaces, I definitely still feel like as an as a woman of color and artist of color myself quite alienated by that type of content and I find myself more drawn to underground you know uh, artist of color based media because I already understand that there's this underlying like purpose of of you know making me feel seen as a person and I feel like because I mean what I said before like the reason why we're able to have such a deep connection with our audience is because we ourselves put that kind of mission and, and statement out there. So when you have that, like, I guess for me, like, again, it's all about being seen, feeling seen in art, like in museums and in most traditional media and also in like modern media and things that are considered progressive. Like, again, it's, it's not really, and, the art that I connect with most is primarily done by by women and women of color. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we also wanted to like make our staff all like women of color or non-binary POC and um, because because we like kind of centered around that I feel like those who often feel like marginalized feel more comfortable coming to us because we're also we're all you know like identifying with with them and and I think in general, it also creates more, I guess, not flexibility, but like, I don't know. I, I think it makes people feel more comfortable also uh, voicing themselves to us, like our, our staff and, mm -hmm. and you know, the people that interact with us in general. Like, I think it, it creates this like comfort and, and feeling of community that um, sometimes can be not as you know i guess there when it is very white dominated i feel like in, in a lot of media that claims to be like very like 
diverse and like you know like very liberal the like people in power and the creators are ultimately always like end up being white as well and so that's why like I think it's it would like strikes us different as a team as a whole yeah super cool super cool you you may kind of have already answered this um but I'm curious like as the operation is kind of scaled out and you're putting more content out and you're putting things out, you know, to more people and your team is getting larger. Um, how do you, how have you like kept that authenticity and like the integrity, like across all of the team members and across like all of your content? Like how, how do you keep all that still focused? Right. Mm, yeah, even like with growing bigger and bigger, like when we started out, we were very small, like uh, our audience, like, like thank god for the bay area community like the berkeley community who is like very very supportive like it was a lot of our like friends and like teachers from our high school like you know like sending out to their yeah, friends and just that, yeah we definitely have a lot of bay area berkeley community in in our like audience but as we like continue to expand i think the, what we always like wanted to do is make sure that like our voices are still like present in there because there's that sense of like connection and like vulnerability with the artists that submit to us where it's not just like we're this like big platform this like void on social media that you like send things to um but we want to like make sure to like really build that like connection with each one of our like you know like followers and like whoever that like an artist that are submitting and contributing like we you know, like we have ourselves on the website, like people know that like we are like there like for them. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, you can go. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I also feel like um, I think there is like in general this understanding with the two of us too, where like we both at the end of the day truly like just care about our mission and like because that we always try to make that the main objective, it's hard to kind of skew or like get away from that. Like with every decision we make, everything we do, it's always like, does this, you know, achieve something that we, what, that was like something that we set as our goals. And so because we have that so heavily in our mind and as like a, you know, kind of a foundation, um, I think it's it, it also kind of keeps us grounded in like what we're about you know what I mean so looking at like the first impression of your zine like what do you want people to get out of um either like visiting your Instagram or like going on your website or buying your copy like what's the first impression you want to give off mm -hmm. like once again I would say like our mission like we're trying to like combat like most like media and really highlight those stories that go untold and those like marginalized voices like that in, in itself, of itself, as simply said. Yeah, and also I think just in general, like, um, again, like going back to this idea of like not sugarcoating um, youthhood and, and I guess um, adolescence, like trying to have this focus on like, you know, we understand that, you know, most kids upbringing isn't this like really pretty, uh, I don't know, like, um, you know, uh, upbringing, like most people go through really, really difficult things, especially if you're a marginalized person. And so like creating that space where you feel like you're not alone. I think that's another thing that we really try to focus on is like other people are there with you and other people have experienced the things you have. And like, if you need to talk about anything, like we're here, that's kind of like what we're trying to do too. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Another question, like in, I think a lot of, a, a lot of areas of the creative industry, there's like this question of, of well, we want to hire diverse talent or like we want to work with diverse talent, but like it's hard to find. The reality is that like it really isn't. But do you find like with you guys, are you receiving, like are people coming, is the, the people that you're looking for to like collaborate with and work with and support and highlight, are they coming to you? Or do you, do you find that there are certain places where you're finding really interesting voices like how does that kind of process work yeah there are definitely people I have like no idea where they find us from and just like 
are like naturally drawn the universe just brings them towards us but we do reach out to like a lot a lot of artists um I feel like that's just like in general for any advice on people here who uh just like want to know more about like how to start a zine or how to like reach out to artists like we dm like so 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 many artists be like hey would you like to submit your work like this is what we're about and just like send that message out across and that's like a really good way and strategy to like get more more people on your audience yeah um I mean I, I'd say like I think I mean yeah kind of just repeating what Macy said reaching out to people is probably one of the biggest things that can help you um and I guess to answer your question more specifically like I think it is true like with any kind of thing with college applications anything like that when the people who are looking for like a diverse audience aren't diverse themselves or like marginalized themselves it can create this like weird dynamic between the two so like because for us again we're we're so transparent about what we want to achieve and and it also like personally like we understand I guess like we have a personal connection to that own mission of like being a diverse space or whatever so I think because of that people are more drawn to or or open to collaborating with us because there isn't this like weird I guess um underlying nuance to it yeah awesome so we have a couple questions in the comments the first one being on advice to how to look slash solidify branding for your zine mm -hmm. yeah um Mimi do you want to talk about like our inspirations in terms of visuals yeah so when I first started like my own whole like when I just posted I remember kind of crediting I guess like intersectional punk feminism, right, girl, all of these like kind of more punk leaning visuals, um, drawing lots of inspiration from like specific people and icons, I guess definitely having like inspirations from art movements in the past, knowing what art movements and artists you gather influence from is really important in solidifying your own image because you're able to kind of, you know, just like have a more grounded understanding of like what you want to be visually, who you want to represent yourself as visually. Um, I think as we kind of went on further, uh, definitely making like, <laughs> it's it's really simple, but just like making mood boards, color palettes, all of these things, checking out what font you want to use, all of that <laughs> is super important. I am like a Pinterest expert. I am in love with Pinterest. I use it probably <laughs> the most out of any app on my phone. I like make a Pinterest board to communicate like with every single thing that like Macy and I do, like if we're like making a photo shoot, if we're like doing some sort of project together, I'm just like, I can't talk about this. I need to make a Pinterest board about it and you'll understand what I mean. So definitely like trying to use visuals as a way to communicate, I feel like it's actually a really good form of like, not only branding yourself, but also kind of like just, I guess, uh, what is it? Shaping who you are personally as an artist is really important, yeah just knowing who you are, knowing what you like. Yeah, I would say the same thing that Mimi said. And I feel like pick what whatever calls most to you and what speaks to you as like what you're about, like what it is that you want to say and finding visuals that sort of match and align with both your ideals, ideas like and content in the zine, but then like visually, like how can you communicate that? That's like always a question to think about. Um, but yeah, for us, like Mimi touched on, we're very like inspired by like Riot Girl and like, you know, like fanzines and that sort of like handmade personal feel and like of, you know, what the, um, what Riot Girl was all about back in the day, but we kind of wanted to like expand on that and make it like, you know, a whole like published like magazine almost instead of just like the little, little handmade zines, but still keep that personal connection. And I think also like, kind of examining what your influences are and then kind of adding your own personal twist to it, I feel like is also really important because like personally as like just myself, I do really love Riot Girl and the whole movement that it was, but also kind of have critiques on like how white dominated it was kind of the more, uh, I guess, um, you know, non-inclusive areas that it had. And for us, we're kind of like, again, recontextualizing what like different art was and kind of like talking about what good art can be all of that and so like know your influences but also like know how to differentiate yourself from it know 
like why it's significant to you and what you want to add on to it. Like put basically like writing your own story in line with your influence, I feel like is really good because you want to be able to differentiate yourself, but also know who you are and what inspires you. You know what I mean? Super cool. Super cool. I'm curious what uh, your advice might be to somebody who is starting a new zine and maybe has like a clear idea that they want to do a zine or they want to work with a bunch of artists, but maybe they don't quite understand or know like what that one thing is or like what it's really about yet. So like, what would your advice be for people trying yeah, to find Honestly, out? when we started, we weren't as clear on what it is that we we're about. And that sort of like, the beauty of it is like, it, it really does like happen along the way. Like you realize, cause we were like thinking about submissions. We were looking through the like submissions we get for issue one. And we're like, this is not what we want. This is what we want to focus on. Like this, you know, all of it sort of just like unraveled itself as we moved along. And I would say, even if you, from the beginning, it definitely is good to have like, you know, your one goal or try to like figure out what it is that you're about. It'll always like form and change while you like move through the process. But yeah, I would say one of the most important things for us, what like really helped us is since we were able to identify that like earlier on, we were able to like really communicate that through our platform. And so if you can sort of just like really identify why is it is why are you creating this and like what it is that you want to say who are you saying this for like who is your audience what needs to be created and like what does that make sense like yeah I mean I can kind of add on to it but like mm -hmm. I think yeah definitely like be prepared to handle more uh, I guess the nitty-gritty of like financial stuff I guess like knowing where you want to draw your like I don't know, get your resources from all of that, like connections you have. But the actual like artistry of it, the actual like really like, I guess, tuning into what specifically concisely you're about definitely comes to you along the way. Like, I mean, for us, like it was super simple. Like our first issue was literally just like really abstract and obscure and the like, theme is just like, what does adolescence mean to you? And that was like super, super huge. And we got a whole bunch of different submissions and like just from that like I guess um whole assortment of what we wanted we you know curated a zine that that we really were proud of and then be, from there we were able to have this really really specific theme for a second issue of like you know taste and that whole idea but um I feel like because of that you know you, you it definitely does come to you and it's okay to change and and you know, evolve your own artistry and, and, you know, I guess not change, but like become more and more concise as you go on. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with Mimi. And two more things I'll say is find what differentiates you and what you love and communicate that. And you will attract the right, the like perfect audience. Cause like when you put out the energy of what it is that you're about, you're gonna like attract the, just the right audience and the right people. And that's gonna, what, that's what's gonna help you like grow in a healthy and like good way. And second thing that I think is also really important is to is create like tangible goals that you can like actually measure, like set like dates and deadlines. Like we were, we were like September 1st, that's when we wanna like get issue one out. And this was like back in May before we even launched. I mean, he was like, oh, I don't know. Can we like do that? And I'm like, no, we have to like, we have to set it and plan things out. And that way you can kind of see directly what's in head, what's ahead of you and how to like get there. And then you could sort of like piece all the little things together up, up until then. And that way you have something to like move towards always. Um, Definitely. So um, I see you have photos from your zine, the photo shoots that you've guys done behind you. And I personally love them. We have a question. Yeah, right there. <laughs> They're so beautiful. Um, we have a question asking, how do you guys? Yes, we love it. Um, how do you guys plan and execute editorial shoots? Also, where do you find models for editorial shoots? Mm. Um, I would say that we're definitely not like experts in editorial shoots like that's not what we're about but we always definitely like we know for like at least for our issues we wanted to like come up with the like covers and do the shoots for those. Um, I guess since we're able to well we like look at the content of each issue first and then we kind of basically almost have the book, book together before we really like start planning the actual cover because that way we can like that we do the cover shoot is almost, almost the last thing um but that's because i'm far and the timing just worked out 
um, because now I, I live in San Diego and my name is in Berkeley. So we like have been working over Zoom together. Um, but yeah, so I guess then we like pick out what we feel best represents the zine. For issue one, we noticed we had a lot of cake imagery inside of um, inside issue one itself. And we kind of wanted this just like, I don't know, but you want to talk more about like issue yeah. one? Issue I two. think like with the cake photo shoot, like it was just like, you know, it's our first zine kind of like happy birthday. Um, you know, we had like the number one candle cause it's like the birth of our first issue. But like all, overall, like with our covers, like I think that because Macy and I kind of do have a sense of like, I don't know, we, we do like, you know, uh, I don't know. We, we have gone to art classes. We understand composition and layout and all of these things. Um, it kind of does come naturally to us. And all of the like shoots that we do are pretty much just us and our friends. Like for issue two, like Kemi, the model is just like one of Macy's friends from high school. Um, and we um, like for the fruit and stuff, we just like ran to the grocery store, like- The Pinterest board, this is how we do it. We make yeah. a Pinterest okay. board. Everything was in, like- a I was like, this Pinterest board looks like Kemi. Like we yeah. made the Pinterest board off of her like style and aesthetic. And we were like, Kemi should just be our model. So we asked yeah. her to <laughs> sew down and did a so great like, job. Like this is all her like, just but like- But in general, like, like I Pinterest. think the, the message that we're trying to say is like, you don't need like this high high level professional like stuff you can find friends who will model for you you can buy fruit you can like get fabric like all of these things are essentially accessible to you you don't need to use a ton of money um like for the shoot itself super simple we this is a red sheet on my table in the courtyard and all these prompts we got props we got from like party city for like five dollars like there's a bunch of tiny babies in like the nursery section um, we were like we want to this is like from the uh, sexual harassment walkout from our high school and like random random props um yeah like you can a lot find of fruits for yeah like yeah. pretty much if you just like reach out everything is about reach out everything is about outreach sorry outreach everything is about outreach if you like put on your story find people in your area that would be down to help you because there definitely exist. And like, you know, just, I feel like it's definitely possible and you don't need to put a ton of like money and professional level uh, stuff into it. Just make it how you think is beautiful and it'll come out really beautiful, essentially. Yeah, there are so, so, so many like artists who would be like down. It's all, it's all about just like trying to attract those people and find those right people. So just like reach out, like DM as many accounts as you can. Yeah, as long as you're not afraid of putting yourself out there, you can probably do anything you want. So cool, so cool. Um, I feel like a lot of people who are, are starting out and, you know, like trying to do things like this, whether it's an editorial shoot or like, you know, their first issue or whatever, it, or even just an art project, there's like this intimidation of, you know, seeing things that you really love and being like, that's like really great and that's awesome. But then feeling like I have no idea how to do it. So it's so awesome to hear from you guys that you're like, oh yeah, we just like, we make a Pinterest board and we reach out and we just like make it happen. You know, we just like, we just use whatever we have. So I'm also curious, like, does that kind of relate to like your, your goal of, of defining, redefining what good art is? Like, d does that kind of fit into that mission, that process? Yeah, um, actually, now that you mentioned, I remember like in, in issue one as well, what we wanted for like adolescents, like the reason why that theme was that is we were like, I talked about it a bit before, but like we saw all the like very romanticized version of youth and the like Lady Bird, what are the other movies? It's Call Me By Your Name, you know what I mean. Bricks of being a wallflower, all that stuff. Bricks of being a wallflower aesthetic. Um, and we wanted to like, like we, the, the like content we have in here isn't all like super high professional like big artists and photographers but we like we stuck in like handwritten notes from people's like diaries like little anons and like scribbles everywhere and sort of just like showing that like I don't know we like saw art and like beauty and like there's so much more than just this like really like professional like done up like magazine look and there, there's I don't know we kind of just like find a lot of beauty and just like the very simple like kind of like scribbles this is a page of like anons where like people like wrote these like kind of like 4am thoughts and sent it to us 
um, sort of stuff like that. So I feel like that definitely is part of our mission, not even just like highlighting marginalized voices, but also just kind of a new look to like art rather than having that like very um, like professional editorial shoots that a lot of this is just like people in their house and their thoughts and they're just like at their most vulnerable state. Definitely. So someone asked, any advice on growing a platform? Um, I feel like, I mean, social media in this case is going to be your best friend. Like using like TikTok and I mean, as I mean, as as much as you might want to stay away from social media, you kind of have to use it at this point in time, especially because of quarantine and being at home, everybody's on their phone. That's kind of just the reality of the situation. Um, to be super technical about things, I think like, you know, uh, following a lot of artists at first and then getting them to follow you back, like just simple things like that. Um, and yeah, using TikTok is actually really effective. That was one of the first things that like, when we first started, we met with a lot of other zines and kind of asked them like, you know, what are some advice that you'd give us? Everybody said like, get a TikTok account, like make yeah. TikToks, try to blow up on TikTok because then people are going to follow you on Instagram. Like it's just a whole thing. Um, yeah, but in general, like using social media is 100% going to be helpful and um yeah, Macy, you can add on to it. Yeah, I'll just like reiterate that we literally like a lot of our submissions, we just like DM people and then go through the suggested, like look at that and be like, oh, cool photography, DM that. And then go until Instagram says like, you are a robot, like stop doing that. And then we come back like 20 minutes later and do the same thing like hundreds yeah. of times over, literally what we do. So yeah. It's it's just a lot of being on your phone, a lot of DM <laughs> but that's, it is kind of like the, the point that we're at where, you know, you, you uh, got to do what you have to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I love the the dedication, the commitment <laughs> to like you know, being a, a bot almost and then just like coming back and doing, doing it again. Um, is that kind of, is that similar to what you do when you're looking for um, new people to, to join the team or how do you approach expanding your team when you need to? We actually don't do that much like direct outreach when it comes to applications. Um, and this is like what we were saying so many times before, but like when we have our mission so clearly in that, we attract the right audience. So we just have like applications out there. You know, I'm sure like we have, we like, again, thankful for our community, like people like reshare and repost that, um, but we don't really like do very much in terms of outreach and then the right people always apply. And yeah, at the moment we have like maybe like 25 staff from all over. Sanai is one of our staff writers who's in here at the moment, but yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much, I mean, yeah, we, we for staff, staff, uh, we essentially just like have an application out there, say, mm -hmm. you want to join our staff, join us. And people are usually happy to, you know, work for us and not work for us, like work with us without yeah. pay, which is amazing. And mm -hmm. we're so grateful for it. But like people are willing to work with you to just get their stuff out there because people, everybody wants to get their stuff out there. So like, you know, just take the opportunity. Like work for something, will not be a part of like something that's like realigns with their values and this mission as well. Um, that's something we were, we were honestly surprised at that number because we had applications open when we first started, we had four posts and it was like nothing, like barely that many followers. And we got like over 70 applications and that's just to show like how many people like really do like care and like want to help. And there's so, so, so many people out there that like really want to join. So I'm not like, if, if you want to like start a team, like you can find people, like yeah. it's definitely possible. From like all over the world too, like we would mm -hmm. get applications from people in like South Africa and the UK and Australia, like we have, our staff is from all over the world. And I think that is something that's really beautiful about it is that like, we're able to literally like give a platform to people all over the world. And, and um, that honestly feels so good. Uh, and yeah, sorry, I was about to say something. Um, Never mind, I completely forgot. <laughs> You're all good. So when it comes to time management, how do you balance school, your personal life, and the magazine? Yeah. We don't. <laughs> we just, I mean, we do, but like, we're 
both insanely, insanely busy. I mean, I'm in college now, which like, and running Antifragile is definitely like a full-time, full-time job, especially since we like to do like all of the pages ourselves. Like we don't have like a super big team. We have like the staff writers, online content kind of managed, but then we like do all of the, like everything else. I feel like it's really all about like our like self-motivation and like we we never think about antifragile as like work that we have to do that we like put off like it's always stuff we want to do like I'm like doing my class and at the end of the day like we we usually like zoom go on a zoom call from like 8 p.m to 10 30 at night like every single day and just like talk and hang out but like do some a little bit like at a time every single day like always always kind of moving forward and also like if we setting the setting goals definitely helps because that like keeps you on track we have a schedule that we like list out like what we're going to post for the day and also just like what it is that we like have up and coming like when do we want issue to uh, to be out so when do we have to start reaching out when do we have to do this that that and that way like it keeps everything like on track so because if you don't have that it's very very easy for like you to like really really fall behind um so that's definitely helpful but um yeah managing time is really something that is very very difficult but I would say that yeah since we like set those goals and are super self-motivated we're able to get all of it done yeah I think also like make sure that you like what you're doing you know like if it starts to feel like work you have to change something because then it's not going to be sustainable and Mm -hmm. like me and Macy again super busy like I'm a junior in high school I'm like trying to get my SAT like AP exams taking hella classes like I'm a dancer and I like dance for about two hours a day like it's super intense but you know if you like it you're going to find time to work on it and it shouldn't feel like a chore most of the time like I mean the nitty-gritty stuff financing all of that might feel busy and like like busy work but like even when I'm shipping things like it's fun to me like I like the act of like putting things in packages going to the store and like being able to go on a walk like stuff like that like you should be able to enjoy it and like feel like it's worth it because that's the point you know you're doing this for yourself and for the I don't know the you you, you're doing it because you're an artist and that should be able to motivate you enough you know what I mean I want to like write that down and frame it on my wall (laughs) inspirational speaker out here for real um I wanted to ask when you guys go about creating a theme and maybe even specifically uh taste like how did you arrive at that what was the beginning the middle (laughs) oh my god I remember this zoom call so vividly we were like we are genius this is so great Um, yeah yeah wait you can go I'll go up what did you say you wanted to talk? Yeah, kind of. Okay, just go ahead. Yeah, like, no like we were, I mean, th- from the beginning of like starting issue two, like we had just finished issue one, like um, we were pretty much just like, after issue one, we were super like on it. We were just like, oh, I want to make another one. So like, we didn't even really take a break, which we probably should have, but it was fine. And um, we were just like, we knew we wanted to focus on like, people of color voices, women of color and non binary people of color's voices. Like that was like 100% what we wanted to do. Um, and we were just like thinking like, what, what is our theme? Like, what do we want to do? Like, how can we make this cool? And I like all of a sudden just like remembered like this video that I watched. I love ContraPoints. She's like a YouTuber. I'm in love with her. I love her so much. She makes really cool content. Uh, I suggest you check her out. But um, I remember her video she made once called Opulence and it was about taste essentially. Um, I mean, it was about a lot of things like class, race, struggles, et cetera. But like there was this section about good taste and art. And she basically like was able to explain how how intimately taste was related to power. And that struck such a chord in me. And I remembered that in the moment I was like, oh my God, this is 100% what we're about. And then I started realizing like, it's also like the action of like tasting, like not, I mean, yeah, like as, as a woman of color, like, what do you taste? Like what, what uh, experiences do you have? How much pain, suffering have you taste? What joy and like community and, and, you know, I guess positivity have you tasted? Like it's, it's about like, you know, your experiences. And there was just this dichotomy of these like two themes that worked in so perfectly together. And it felt like, like one of those like aha moments of like, oh my God, this is perfect. And so like, 
I don't know, I, I talked, we like talked about it together and it was just like, you know, it was just kind of perfect. Like it came up and you were like, we need to do this. This is perfect. I'm like trying to find the link to the video right now. It's taking, <laughs> but it, it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause for issue one, we wanted to just, since we just started, we like didn't know who, how many people were going to submit. So we kept that like open to everyone. We were like, everyone could submit like, um, yeah, just adolescence, something that everybody could relate to. Um, but like once we like kept, you know, throughout the process, that's when we really realized what our goals were, were and like what our values were and like kind of, you know, highlighting these marginalized voices and like POC. Um, so that's why we wanted issue two to like completely like have that completely dedicated for that. Um, and yeah, just like we were just like brainstorming like words and like taste and like kind of like tacky and campy. Like we started with like, yeah, what's what's campy um, and like, yeah, it just it, it, I guess that like came came naturally, but it started with it starts with like the idea, like what's the goal, what's the overall message we're trying to say with the issue, and then the visuals surrounding that kind of like follow. I would say. Awesome. And so we're gonna wrap up soon. So this is gonna be the last question on our on our end. And if anybody else has any questions, feel free to ask that in the chat. But where do you guys see yourself like in a couple of years? Or where exactly do you want to take anti-fragile? Like what is the end goal and like what do you like want to accomplish? Yeah. I when we started, we didn't just want to like focus on issues, um, but we always want to keep up this like artist collective aspect of it and this like kind of community and this platform and theoretically like not with COVID we wanted to do like events like it'd be really cool to have like a lineup of like you know musicians and artists of like like really cool like female bands or something and have just like a whole you know like just event on like music and then also have like artists there and like have our issues there as well um but you know kind of just like focusing on how we can like rethink what an artist collective means right and like what you know with social media and just like other ways to expand it sort of in that sense yeah I feel like we definitely want to have the opportunity in a post-covid world to you know just have events like that would honestly be the dream I remember like one of the biggest things that I loved about living in the bay area was this like there's a play there's like a punk venue called 94 Gilman it was like super fun I'd go there with my friends all the time and there would just be these like local shows playing and to be able to like possibly host an event with them like I think like um yeah just being able to connect with people um one-to-one -one, like having basically having anti-fragile in a post-covid world that is kind of like something that we want to be able to do because it would unleash um a lot of what we wanted to originally without the limitations of, you know, all of what we have to live with right now. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Are we, are we out of time here? Becca, are we, do we have another minute or? Do you guys, do you want me us to ask more questions? Does anybody in the chat want to ask more questions? Yeah, if any of you have any questions, let us know. Any last things? Oh, I have a, I have a question actually, just a quick one. Any advice on making Pinterest boards? Any recommendations? <laughs> like me and me, you wanna? Yeah. This? Well, so I, um, I, what I usually do is like, because I already have so many pins like in separate boards, you can search your pins already and like search keywords from what you already uh -huh like have saved and then that's already like a bunch of pins that you like and like are aligned in line with your general style and and taste and so you can do that but if you're just starting um definitely search keywords um like and then you can even put pins that you're not too fond of in a pinterest board already and then like go to the more ideas section and it'll like the more and more that you like keep curating it the more specific and I don't know. Um, yeah, just like specific and concise it'll be. Any public Pinterest boards? Oh, yes, I will put my Pinterest down because I'm, I'm trying really to find a link to our Pinterest right now. <laughs> Do you Sweet. have the link to the antifragile? Yeah, I do. I can I can okay. share that. This was our um, issue to
Pinterest board. And I can also go through our info doc that we started at the like very beginning, if that's helpful. Like I, I don't think we have enough time for that, but uh, yeah. that would be as well but yeah those are our two pinterest boards for anti-fragile my general pinterest is uh i'll just link that too because i'm proud of it <laughs> oh, i think we had one last question from sanai we can answer that really quick whenever we're stuck in a creative rut how do you get inspired mm -hmm. um yeah that's a really good question macy do you want to answer first i can if you want to. yeah i guess just like hmm. Well, it, for me, I feel like that's a different question. There's like in stuck in a creative rut for anti-fragile and also for like art personally. Yeah. Um, hmm. I feel like remembering what it is that you are like passionate about and like what drives you forward. And like, you know, for anti-fragile, just like remembering what we're about and like why we're doing what we're doing really, really is like inspiring and then gets me going. But um, I guess, also, I feel like, like for art, like you need to be in the right like headspace to in order to like create, you know, the good art. Um, and for me, that's always like music. So I feel like just like taking some time out and like listening to music would be what I, I would do. Yeah, I think also like for me, I have all of my like core media content art that I love and like always go back to when I'm stuck in a creative rut like movies uh books and like music again like just visual art you should have like a curation of things that inspire you that for me like I always go back to that whenever I'm stuck um, yeah yeah when I, for me, like inspiration happens and in, like, like spontaneous, like first. And when I get like that, you know, burst of creativity and like inspiration, it's just like so many ideas at once. So like write all of that down for like when, for yourself to come back later when you're not like feeling that. Really, that. really relish that experience. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for hopping on and talking with us. Thank yeah. you. This is so fun. Mm hmm yeah, of course. And thank you everybody for coming. Like, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you.